He's getting older. Champagne room! Oh, hit the full one! But not wiser. Bonarama! This is the Lefty Show. Welcome, everybody, to the Lefty Show, episode number 53. I am your host, Lefty. Glad to be here with each and every one of you. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, here today, uh, which is Thursday, the 10th of July in the year of our Spaghetti Monster 2014. A little bit of a morning edition of the Lefty Show. I feel like I'm a lefty, sh like a radio DJ in the morning. Like, oh, it's beat of the morning. Let's call people and do crazy things as we introduce the latest song from Katy Perry. Uh, welcome one and all to the Lefty Show. Got a lot of stuff to do today. Lots to talk about. Which is why you're going to be getting the Lefty Show earlier in the day than is the norm. And uh, we'll see if we like it, if I like this kind of time slot. I don't really have a time slot per se. It's just something I shoot for. I know a lot of podcasts tend to be later in the day. Um, but I like, I'm a, I'm a more... I'm a bigger fan of like, you know, I go to sleep thinking about tomorrow's podcast and, and what I'm going to talk about and, and monologues and what stories to cover and, and all those things. And it, and then waking up, holding those thoughts in my mind while I'm doing other things, whether it be recording, editing, uploading videos for the day, the next few days, whatever. And, um, and, and I, I holding those thoughts in my head is rather hard. So I like the idea of just getting up and, uh, <clears throat> getting the show off or at least recording it and then rendering and uploading is, is something completely different as, as anybody close to a YouTuber or YouTube at all knows actually getting a show ready to go and getting something up on YouTube is sometimes a pain, absolute pain in the ass. Uh, welcome on, welcome on to the Lefty Show. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you to everybody for watching on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can go to find me and the show in its YouTube formation, as well as video gaming content and vlogity vlogging content. Go to YouTube.com slash LeftyOX. You want to follow me on Twitter? That's where you can check out with me or check me out or check I'll check you out. No, I won't. Uh, <laughs> throughout the week in between shows you want to hear what I'm up about what I'm ranting about and or you want to bring something uh, as a news story or talk with me about something Twitter is a great place to do it go to twitter.com slash lefty 643 that's twitter.com slash lefty 643 or just at lefty 643 on Twitter thank you to everybody that's been uh, sharing the show and thank you to everybody for sharing the show with a friend family member or co-worker you are helping us rise the ranks of the top 100 gaming or comedy podcasts on iTunes and I greatly appreciate all of you for helping me do that uh, by sharing the show again with uh, friends, family and co-workers which is easier to do now because we've got an RSS feed. Just go to leftyshow.podbean.com. There's a link in the description. Leftyshow.podbean.com, or you can search The Lefty Show on your Android podcasting app of choice, or go to the iTunes store if you want to help us climb those ranks. Everybody download iTunes. Go to the iTunes store. Search The Lefty Show. Be sure to subscribe. Rate the channel. Rate the feed. All that stuff. Uh, iTunes store and search The Lefty Show. We got as high as number 75 on the list. I don't know... Some people thought the list was weekly or was updated daily. It appears as though it's like a real-time list. What the algorithm is, I don't know, to list the top podcasts and overall and, and in any different category in iTunes. But The Lefty Show, for those of you that don't know, I was keeping an eye on it yesterday after it was brought to my attention. The Lefty Show reached as high as 75 on the comedy podcast list uh, on iTunes. And for an RSS feed that's been around for, or for a show that's been around, or at least on iTunes for less than a month or, or about a month, and for a non stand up comedian to have a show that was at least as per iTunes or Apple's algorithm is on par with Allison Rosen is your new best friend. If you know her from uh, the Adam Carolla show and, uh, and Greg Fitzsimmons weekly podcast, uh, we've been on par with those kinds of shows and it's been amazing. And I thank you all for helping me get there. And I thank you all for helping me and the show continue to climb the ranks. So go to the iTunes store and search the Lefty Show. And uh, thank you to everybody that's been donating. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions is where you go if you want to help uh, donate to the show. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions. I had a uh, I had a run in with a dog 
yesterday. And it was not a bad, like I didn't have to kick the dog or the dog wasn't barking at me. In fact, we were separated by a fence the entire time. But after my workout, I work out for about 45 minutes, make sure of um, a uh, stationary bike, uh, squats, and heavy bag work, uh, working some push-ups here and there. And that usually runs about 45 minutes. And then I go for, if my after doing squats, if I can jog, I jog. And if I can't, I walk. And uh, it's about a mile track, and uh, there's a it's it's through a through a neighborhood and there's there's one part where i'm walking by a backyard the backyard backs up to a street and there's a fence right and so i'm walking by and these people whomever they are i have no idea who they are have a have a dog or i think multiple dogs actually and yesterday i was uh, and and as you approach, you can see. And in the first time I was, I saw a dog coming. I was like, oh, oh or because I don't know, like, are they really going to be able to jump this fence? I don't know. Better be ready. So I've always kept an eye as I'm approaching. Like, oh, is there a dog out there? Oh shit! Because I just don't, I don't want to be scared by a dog because they've got a some kind of pit bull or something. I think. And. It's weird because in one corner, the, the way I walk, I walk along the backyard and there's some obstruction on one corner. There's like some shrubbery and like a, a like a little hut thing where they keep the lawn tools or whatever it is, a little shed. And so as I'm approaching, my view is blocked of the backyard and I can't see. And I'm looking in. Oh, is there a dog? I can't. Uh, 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 all right, it looks cool. All right, let's let's stroll on by. And as I reach the end of the obstructions, keep in mind there's more backyard to walk by. As I reach the end of the obstru- obstructions, here comes this gigantic pit bull <laughs> at me, and I I'm like, shit, damn it, damn it. And this pit bull is really pissed at me. I don't know what I did to the pit bull, but he's not happy. Bearing teeth, barking, very clearly go away human. And I didn't want to seem as though, because I've been playing around with this in my head, this idea in my head, because when dogs bark at you, they're trying, I think, to get you to go away. They're not trying to say, hey, come here, blah, 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 blah. They're trying to get you to go away. And to leave, especially if they're in their home, they're trying to protect their owners and or their masters or whatever, and they're trying to prote- protect that area. And when they're barking at you like that, they want you to go away. Now, I was standing with a chain link fence between me and this pit bull, and I'm like, well, I don't want to try this theory here. But as I walked away far enough... The dog continued to bark at me, like really pissed off. And so when I got far enough away and it could still see me, I turned and I stopped and I just looked at it and it continued to bark. And I just put my hands on my hips and I just stood there. I was listening to some podcast on a, on a, on an iPod and I just stood there looking at the dog while it was barking at me, trying to tell me to go away because fuck you, dog. That's what fuck you for. First of all, for scaring the shit out of me. If you're going to bark on my approach, just bark. I've got no problem with you barking at me, but if you're going to play that little game of who I'm going to wait until this human shows up and then I'm going to leap out and scare the shit out of him. Well, then fuck you. Then when you're trying to get me to go away and you're barking and then you see me start to walk away, you're in your little doggy brain. You're like, oh, yes, this is working. This is working so well. Oh, my God. And then I'm not going to move. And then I stop walking away and I turn to look at you and you continue to bark. But I don't I don't go anywhere. I'm just looking at you. Fuck you, dog. It's time everybody takes a stand against asshole dogs like that they're trying to get you to go away and your reaction of whoa oh man we need to get away from this thing is what it wants it's like the dogs that are protective over the yards are basically like terrorists 
you can't let the terrorists win. We can't let the terrorists win. Similarly, we can't let the dogs win. We can't let these dogs win. Can't happen. So I want to, for all the people that go out and about and are harassed by other dogs in, uh, in yards and in cages or whatever, when they start barking at you to go away, you don't go away. You stand there. You stand loud and proud. Maybe not loud. I don't think it really, you don't have to bark back at the dog. But you stand proud and don't move because I guarantee you that really pisses the dog off. That really, really, really pisses the dog off. And that is sufficient payback in my mind because you don't want to climb the fence and beat the shit out of the dog because it's being an asshole to you or it's barking and it's being loud and it's, it's you know, the neighbors won't shut up their dog or something like that. You don't need to do that, but just subtle payback when it's barking you like, go away, go away. And you just say, no, dog, I'm not going away. And the dog will be like, no, I'm so angry. That's what we need to do. No violence unless it's necessary. Now, look, if, you, if, if you've got a neighbor or something in your apartment complex or uh, at your house or something like that, and you've got a neighbor whose dog just won't shut up because you, everybody will at some point have one of those neighbors, or at least it'll be in your neighborhood, it'll be in your complex, it'll be in your condo building or whatever, where somebody puts their dog outside and just leaves it there, and then they won't attend to the dog. And the dog is just, well, it's a dog. And it'll bark for attention when it wants to come inside or whatever. If it's cold, if it's hot, it'll bark and say, let me in, human. But sometimes they won't, the the owners won't do it. They'll just, whatever it is the owners do, (laughs) whatever it is the owners go off and do, I don't know, jack off or something. And they won't attend to their dog, but then the dog barking affects the rest of the neighborhood. And... At some point, you you give the obligatory, you go over there and you knock on the door and, you know, don't get mad at the dog. Don't get mad at the dog because the dog is just being a dog at that point. But what you do is you go knock on the door of, again, your apartment neighbor, condo neighbor, whatever it is. You knock on the door and you say, excuse me, you know, I'm in the next complex over or I'm in I'm in the unit uh, two doors down. Could you please be a little bit more attentive to your dog so that it's not left outside barking and screeching and whining to come inside because it's really affecting the other people around. And your neighbor then has two choices. They can either say, oh, okay, my bad. I'm sorry. You're right. Maybe they'll try to spin you some sob story about, oh, an old friend came in from out of town. My tux didn't come back from the cleaners. Or... Or there'll be a gigantic jag bag about it. They just say, what do you want? What are you going to do? Fuck you. It's my dog. Don't You don't like it? Move. You don't like it? Close the window. You don't like it? This or Whatever, right? They'll put the onus back on you to deal with their shitty dog. Just like the, the, the owners of children that make you or expect you to deal with their shitty kids. It's what children do. They play. Not in a fucking restaurant. Get control of your little brood over there. Similarly, get control of your dog. And if they say, oh, well, if you don't like it, uh, uh, if they're indignant about it, they just say, well, it's just a dog. That's what dogs do. You say, okay, well, I'm a human. And sometimes humans shoot vermin. And then you walk away. And you'll give you, maybe if you're a, if you are a dog lover, you give them one more warning when the dog won't shut the fuck up. You go over there and do, do, do. say, look, man, seriously, please. I've asked you before. Can you please be more attentive to your dog and ensure that it's not disrupting life for non-dog owners when you leave it outside and it's just being a loud, obnoxious animal? Can you please do a little something, be a little bit more attentive? And again, they have two choices. Either they're going to say, you're right, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll do it. I didn't realize it was such a problem. Or again, they'll be indignant. They'll say, it's not a problem. What are you talking about? You're the only one to complain. Say, okay. And then you give it one more time. And then you get a pistol. And the next time the dog's barking 
and being a fucking piece of shit and it's outside and it won't shut the fuck up and and you maybe even give them one where you you go trying to pacify the dog you throw it a bone or a treat or something just shut up please but eventually you're gonna have to go shoot that dog you may be a dog lover and that may suck but if people aren't going to tend to their animals especially animals that can fuck you up because despite that that girl in Mississippi never actually being at the KFC and never actually being asked to leave the KFC because her facial deformities she still has facial deformities because she was mauled by three pit bulls and pitbull pitbull showed up and the, the artist he was like fuck you don't like my music bam he kicked her in the head all three of them three pitbulls and pitbull despite that girl never being there dogs will fuck you up and she is evidence of that dogs will fuck up a three-year-old human they dogs i believe inherently know like oh this this little thing is not a threat to me this is a mini human this is a this is the this is not their final form but if uh if you if you refuse to take care of and don't and and make everybody else's problem your animal which indeed could fuck people up like if you've got a low fence or if you just leave your dog outside so anybody walking down the street is going to be barked at and slobbered on and and be challenged by your your vicious dog well then if you refuse to do something about it and you're prompted multiple times well one day your dog's going to get a bullet because at the end of the day, it's not a human because I'm not going to, I'll, I, the worst I can do is leave the restaurant. I can go up to you and say, ma'am, can you please control your children? And I'll go up a second time, ma'am, really please control your children. They're running around they're They knocked into the table. They spilled beer. Can you please control your children? And then I, the only thing after that is I'll call you a cunt and leave. That's it. That's all I got. Cause I'm not shooting your children. I can't shoot your children. I will go to prison despite pretty much no matter what outrageous children do in a restaurant you're not shooting them in the head as punishment but it is much more acceptable and i know dog lovers you might not like to hear this it is much more acceptable to shoot a dog than it is a human especially if the owner of that dog if it's a vicious dog or just an obnoxious dog refuses to actually be an owner and ref- and, and is trying to make you conform your life and your state of being to their animal which they refuse to keep out of everybody's business or keep out of uh, everybody's hair and on that note i mean why do people still buy pit bulls why do people still buy pit bulls rottweilers and all that stuff stop just stop buying those kinds of dogs Oh, they're nice. Oh, my pity is just, oh, he's just the nicest, nicest thing. And he's the only, got him back from my cock sucking husband. And he's just the nicest thing. He plays with the girls all the time. He does. Yeah, you say that now, but the one time it has a bad day or it's got anxiety problems. I had a dog growing up that was honestly diagnosed with having anxiety problems. How, how that's diagnosed, I don't fucking know. But that one time those anxiety problems bubble to the surface, well, then the pit bull's chomping on your kids. And then your only defense is, well, he's never done it before. Well, who the fuck cares he's never done it before? Who the fuck cares? It happened now, and now your child is mauled and in the hospital and then asked to leave a KFC later. That's what happens. That's the chain of events. Guarantee you those three pit bulls owned by that, you know, yokel's grandfather never did a bad thing and they were playing with the child and then the child did something that pissed off the pit bulls it was probably innocuous but they're fucking dogs they're not humans like oh oh you're yanking on my tail ha ha ha, i get it you're just a young human you don't understand they're just dogs you poke them in the eye they're gonna bite you they don't care that you just don't understand what's going on and you're like you don't have good depth perception they don't care They'll bite a child with, for a lack of depth perception, just like they'll bite a guy with an eye patch for lack of depth perception. They don't care because they're dogs. And I guarantee you that grandfather, if he's not dead, said, well, they never did anything bad before. 
So who cares, motherfucker? They, they gnarled on your child, on your grandchild's face for about an hour before you found her. You had to rush her to the hospital, and you're lucky she didn't fucking die. And you just, well, oh, well, he never did anything bad. So what? Every time you hear about bullshit like this, every time you hear about dogs that did crazy shit, dogs that that bit somebody, uh, mauled somebody, or did anything, it's always Rottweiler, Pitbull, that kind of breed. But people still buy them. And they still expect other people to be okay with it. Like, yes, I'm bringing a pit bull into this neighborhood and I'm letting it walk around in my yard without a leash. And it might be able to break through or jump over the fence. And people say, what the fuck are you doing, dude? He says, well, it's my... It's just... It's just a pity. I don't know why the dude talks like this. It's my pity he's never done anything. Not all pit bulls are bad. Do you know that? Not all pit, bull, pit bulls are bad. I said, yeah, you don't know they're bad until they're mon- just nomming on somebody's face. You don't know that they're, that they're bad until they do something bad. But when they do something bad, it's too late to fucking undo what they did. So just save yourself the potential heartache and get a lab or get a boxer. And yes, I know labs and boxers do bad things too, but I guarantee fucking to you, it is not at the level of vicious guard dogs like pit, pit bulls, Rottweilers, and German Shepherds. I guarantee fucking how... And Dobermans, right? I think that's right. Dobermans? Yeah, get a get a tame ass dog. Don't get something that people use. Is there's a reason that pit bulls and rottweilers are used to fight and not chocolate labs? There's a reason Michael Vick had pit bulls and not chocolate labs or Irish setters. There's a reason for that. Why? Because they attack and they're more of an attack def- attack dog than any other breed. So don't put that on any, anybody else in your family or in your neighborhood like, oh, they're just nice little pities. That's all. You, you, you need to break that stereotype, that mold. No, fuck you. You're, oh, oh, well, I mean, I know that sometimes if you smoke cigarettes for 35 years, you get lung cancer, but that's just a stereotype. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. You need to break that mold. Stop trying to tell me what to do. You shouldn't tell them what to do, but you get the idea. So stop buying pit bulls. Stop buying Rottweilers. These things should be licensed. You should need to go get a license to get a breed like that. Because all of a sudden now, if you don't have proper insurance or if you're just negligent, now all of a sudden my child's being attacked or somebody's child is being attacked by a pit bull that you left outside too long and it got pissed off. Now somebody's child is getting attacked by that and you don't have insurance. Well, now I'm paying for it. Now I'm paying for all of it. Every time. It's just, I love dogs, but... I'm not going to let people be irresponsible with their pet ownership because I love dogs and because I believe people should have some individual liberties. It's like the same assholes. There are people, honestly, we talked about this on Painkiller already, and I did some research during the show. There are people, honestly, who collect poisonous snakes. Seriously. Yeah, that's a thing. Never mind the 25-foot pythons that people keep in their houses or they buy a python and then it gets to 8 feet long or 10 feet long and they're like, oh, shit. I need to get rid of this. And then they just jump it in the Everglades, dump it in the Everglades all of a sudden. And now they're reproducing and it's out of control. And now the Everglades have a snake population that was not indigenous a couple hundred thousand years ago. And they're killing shit and fucking with the ecosystem. All because, oh, I get my little boa constrictor. He's so cute. Oh, he's just so cute. Do you see the way he eats those mice? It's so cute. People actually collect copperheads and rattlesnakes, and poisonous snakes, and keep them. People have tarantulas. What the fuck? And we just, yeah, uh, okay, sure. (laughs) Nobody, no license, no oversight, no nothing. You want to go buy a tarantula? Fine, go buy one, you get one. There's some bullshit rinky-dink laws in, in some states about keeping poisonous snakes or keeping poisonous animals that could, that fucking kill humans. Kill fucking humans. We got enough we got enough problems worrying about 
brown recluses. I'm sorry. I was talking about all these creepy crawler critters that make my skin crawl. And then uh, my leg hair just twitched the wrong way. And I'm like, oh, my God, what's on me? Stop it. Leave me alone. We have enough problems worrying about black widows and brown recluses crawling in and out of our home. Now you got to let some jackass keep a tarantula, a terranium of a, a like a tarantula family or a, uh, a coral snake or a copperhead. What the fuck? Then it's just, oh, man, it's, uh, they're just really cool animals, man. Just shut the fuck up, you weird motherfucker. Get a dog or a cat and shut up. I need, keeping poisonous reptiles, human killing poisonous reptiles. If all they can kill is like mice or a bird or something. I'm okay with that, I guess, but people kill, hu- people keep human killing reptiles and they look at you like you've got a problem when you say, hey man, what the fuck are you doing with that poisonous reptile that could very easily kill a human or everybody in your fucking family? If that thing gets out in the middle of the night, if you get drunk and you're whatever you do, why, what do you even do looking at the coral snake? What do you even do? What do you do with a dog? With a dog, it's easy because you can play with the dog and you touch the dog and you love the dog and the dog, I guess, kind of loves you back and it it emotes and it and it, it and it shows you affection. The tarantula in the fucking thing. What the fuck does that do? What does it do for you? You just kind of sit there and you stare at it and go, huh? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a tarantula. That's what that is. Yeah, oh, you see that coral snake? Check this out. You know what it is. It's a creepy sexual fetish. I guarantee you all the people that keep these weird kind of exotic poisonous animals and reptiles and arachnids and all this stuff. I guarantee you it's a, it's a sexual fetish because they get to feed it and that's what they enjoy because I've known people that know that own snakes and I've asked them this question. I say, well, what do you do with it? What do you, you just kind of look at it and you're like, yep, that's a cool ass snake right there. They say, no, 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 man, you get to feed it. That's the cool part. He said, you just come back around when I feed the thing and you can watch it. I'm like, no, I'm good. And I guarantee you it's a creepy sexual fetish. It's an it's an outlet for a creepy sexual fetish that serial killers have. But the serial killers don't have that filter of, oh, I shouldn't kill humans and skull fuck them. Oh, 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 woo. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, so I shouldn't strangle and skull fuck humans and then and then boil their bodies in acid. Okay, okay, okay. I'll just get a snake. And then feed it mice or rats or whatever because they like watching them feed and that's what they like watching. And it's like, oh, well, that's kind of fucked up. Not on the snake's part, on your part. Why do you get a you probably get a bit of a chub watching that thing go to town on some white lab rats or white mice, don't you? That's fucked up, dude. And then, of course, when the snake gets too big, you don't kill it because, oh, it's my friend. You release it into the fucking wild. And by the wild, I mean the forest behind your house. And you just say, go away, snake, go away, be safe. And then the snake is fucking strangling somebody's child or somebody's dog. What the f- and, and And I know some people might make the case of, oh, you're... <laughs> Leveraging the fear, fear, fear. And I say, no, what I'm leveraging is stupid risk. Stupid, stupid risk. In the in the field of in risk assessment, you are somewhat leveraging fear, but I think more so than that, what I'm arguing against is being just stupid about your, about your amount of risk. Going fast on the highway is a risk, but I'm not going to tell people to not go fast on the highway because, oh my God, you might die. I say, no, go ahead. I'm not going to tell people to not smoke because you might get lung cancer. I say, go, go ahead, smoke it up, light it up, Johnny. Go for it. Have fun. It's your body. Do what you want. You're on a car. You, you're, you, you, it's your car. You paid for it, and you're on the road, and you, you pay for the road. So drive however fast you want within some kind of reason. But I'm old enough and intelligent enough to realize that, that 55 miles an hour is fucking bullshit. Go faster. Okay. But when that risk becomes stupid, like keeping poisonous snakes and poisonous reptiles in your house, the only safety of which is plexiglass or Lexan and a plastic little top with a single latch on it, 
That's stupid risk. It's stupid to risk that and to put everybody around you, to put your family, to put your neighborhood, to put humanity in general when you release them into the wild and drastically change the ecosystem, which is what is happening in the Everglades. It's stupid. It's not, it's not about like, oh my God, people might die. It's just you're being fucking dumb. You're just being dumb. And you're, you are putting risk on everybody's head who did not ascribe to that risk. If everybody got together, if you, lived in a, if you lived in a gigantic community and you said, okay, well, I'm going to get a boa constrictor and there is a chance, however slight, that it may get out and strangle your dog or your cat or your child. And if, and if you notified everybody and everybody said, oh, yeah, okay, then get your boa constrictor. But you don't do that. You just buy the motherfucking thing, and then you real you forget to latch it one night, and then you shit. Holy God, where's the six foot python? Where'd it go? Oh shit! And then guess what? It's strangling Fido. Maybe it's maybe it'll do us all a favor and strangle the dog that won't shut the fuck up. Maybe it'll strangle some pit bulls and pit bull. There we go. Strangle the pit bulls and pit bull so that we don't have to hear that music anymore. What does pit bull even do? What is it? Wait. I I guarantee you I've heard 10 of his songs couldn't wouldn't know wouldn't know unless you told me like oh this is Pitbull what does Pitbull do is he like is he the techno version of Louis CK or Louis CK is that no who's the because there's Louis CK who's the comedian and then there's oh no it's Andrew WK there we go ha ah good one brain good one it's Andrew WK. Is he the pop version of Andrew WK where he's just talking about like having a good time and partying or, or I guess Andrew WK was a little bit more hardcore. So I guess is Pitbull, the pop techno version of Jimmy Buffett where he's just like, have a good time. Yeah. And it's like a, it's a decent beat. Yeah. No real, it, they're essentially Pitbull is Jimmy Buffett. That I guess that's what it because it's a decent beat, a, a nice melody, and there's no real musical talent to be had anywhere, no real vocal talent, certainly no lyrical talent. It's just kind of it's a tune you can kind of dance to. There's not really a dance, but you just kind of like sway back and forth or bob your head like wasting away in Margaritaville. Or whatever Pitbull songs are, and you just kind of like you're just yeah oh just yeah da, 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 da. this is Pitbull and I like it. There's not there's no great lyrical like changing the landscape of of music or anything like that. Jimmy Buffett didn't do it. Jimmy Buffett had hits, but he only had hits because middle aged white people like to listen to him while they get drunk on the beach. Pitbull, people like to listen to Pitbull when they're getting drunk in a club. And again, no real musical talent. Not bad. It's just, oh, oh, and he's fucking everywhere. No, Jimmy Buffett, Tommy Bahama. I don't want to buy your rum. I just, I want to buy your shirts. That it, that's it. I don't want to buy your rum. I don't want to buy your shoes or your pants or anything. You make the nice silk Hawaiian shirts or the silk bowler shirts from the fifties and I'll buy those. And that's it. That's all I want. I don't want you everywhere in my fucking life, Tommy Bahama. And I believe Jimmy Buffett owns a piece of that. Same thing with Margaritaville. I don't want to go eat at Margaritaville, the restaurant. I want to go to a beach and listen to Margaritaville and go to Margaritaville, Margaritaville in the theoretical sense as I'm getting drunk on liquor, I don't want to go to a theme restaurant where the theme is endless shitty island music. I wouldn't go to a restaurant to listen to endless shitty club music from Pitbull. I think we're on to something here. I think Pitbull and Jimmy Buffett are one in fact, one in, one in the same. Perhaps even the same person. Maybe it's some just gigantic piece of performance art. Some guy from New York who's like really, really, really into performance art. And he's like, I'm going to create two different characters. Then people are think they're going to be incredibly different, but they're actually exactly the same. I think I've unraveled. I've unraveled your mystery, sir. Sir, your performance art. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. But I have unraveled it. Pitbull and Jimmy Buffett are exactly the same. All right, uh, should we do some news? Let's uh, let's do some news. We got a lot to talk about today in the news today. 
in the the Lefty Show. U.S. police officer Joshua Bourne had raped wife several times before murdering her and children in shooting rampage. Uh, St. Paul police shoot and kill two family dogs in SWAT raid. raid. ISIS, or ISIL, have seized some nuclear material from northern Iraq. Washington, the first Washington man to buy pot, has subsequently been fired from his security job. And Jennifer Lawrence showed off her boobies in France. We're going to talk about Jennifer Lawrence's tits on uh, on the Lefty Show. It's the news of Lefty. Let's talk about all the news and things. Um, we'll leave Jennifer Lawrence. We'll table that for a bit. Uh, this, this is from uh, the NewYorkDailyNews.com. Uh, his high was quickly brought low. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! I love that. You see, that's writing, kids. That's journalism right there. His high was qu- quickly brought low because it's a pot story, right? Right? Get it? Because what do you do with pot? You get a genius, genius. A Spokane, Washington man was fired from his job as a, as a security guard the same day he became the first person to legally buy weed in the city Tuesday. I don't regret it, Mike Boyer told Daily News Wednesday. I'm sad it happened, but I got the title. I'm number one. I regret nothing. Boyer took Tuesday off from his job and set up camp outside Spokane Greenleaf around 7 p.m. Monday, almost 20 hours later. Or no. <clears throat> Boyer took off Tuesday or took Tuesday off from his job to set up camp outside Spokane Greenleaf around 7 p.m. Monday. Almost 20 hours later, around 2 p.m. Tuesday, Boyer was the first in the door when the pot dispensary opened its doors to sell legal marijuana. We don't line up for Black Friday. We line up for Green Tuesday, the 30-year-old told the news. People camp out for Star Wars and donuts. This is more important than that. Dressed in sunglasses and a garish tie-dye t-shirt, Boyer yelled, Go Washington! as he made his historic purchase. He walked out with four grams of sour kush and high five people waiting in line as he held his bag of weed aloft, yelling, First customer! as he walked to his car and immediately went home to get high. Boyer's phone buzzed as he took his first few hits. His employer wanted him to come in and take a urine analysis test within 24 hours. A client had seen the security guard on a newscast and was concerned about the drug use, Boyer said. The test came back positive for THC, according to Boyer. I've worked with them. I've worked for them on and off for 12 years, and several years ago, I signed a document that said I wouldn't have THC in my system, he said. I don't smoke at work. It's the first day, <clears throat> or it's the first day. Who's, gonna, who's not going to run down, Boyer added. People who hadn't smoked since the 70s and 80s were coming down just to be there. It was the day of days. The day of days, the guy says. After being fired, the Spokane native uh, posted his resume to Craigslist in the hopes of landing a new gig. Hopefully in the marijuana industry, he said. I'm staying positive and testing positive. Now, this guy, people may get upset with this guy's employer for uh, for firing him. Never mind the bullshit, you know, t- you won't have THC in your system and da da yada 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 yada. Um, which I think is is now a bit morally questionable because are you alcohol testing too? Are you going to alcohol test? Oh, okay. But you want to know why you got, I'm all for getting high. If you've listened to this show, I'm nothing if not a friend to the high man. I am a friend. Let's list off the people Lefty is friends to. One, the black man. Two, the red man. Three, the high man. We got some more spots open. Uh, Be sure to send your resumes at Lefty643. Friend of the black man. Friend of the red man. Friend to the high man. I'm nothing if not that. And I respect your right to get high. I understand your drive to get high. I understand... um, that it's that it's not the evil and uh, and I was talking yesterday in yesterday's show, it was uh, reefer madness. Reefer madness is what we were looking for. Yes, better luck next time, Lefty, you dumbass. It's not the reefer madness craze that every that we put ourselves through in the 30s and 40s. I understand that it's a it's a recreational drug that gets you uh, in a different state of mind, much like alcohol. It Im- and in fact, it Im- impairs you. Uh, much like alcohol, the effects, uh, so I'm told, are are much like alcohol. At least a a a moderate moderate alcohol consum- consumption, a moderate drunk, if you will, not shit faced, not plastered, but just a moderate buzz. Like ah, this is good. Let's just talk about things. And my face feels tingly, not numb, but just a little tingly. Ah, this feels good. 
that's what I've heard. This is that that I've heard again that it's like and, and no problem at all. No problem at all. And, and I think it should be legal. And I'm and Michael Boyer. Uh, congratulations to him for being the first person in Washington to buy weed. Please don't wear that tie dye t-shirt anymore. Here's why you probably got fired. And here's why it's completely within the realm of possibility and reasonability. Reasonableness. Reasonability? I'm going to write that down. Copyright that shit. For your employer to fire you. Okay? Here's why. Michael, sit down. Come in. Michael, come in and come on in and sit down. Yes, how are you? How are you? Good, good, good. You high? No? All right. You want to get high? <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Mike. Mike, I'm just messing with you. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sit sit down. Sit back down. Come on. on. So, Mike, we're going to have to let you go. Uh, You tested positive for THC, but that's not the reason you're being let go. I can tell you right now that's not the reason. Uh, That that document is outdated and and is not in keeping with with perfectly legal um, things that you can do now in the state of Washington. Uh, The reason you're getting fired, Mike, 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 pay attention. Come on. Come on. No, 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 no. The reason you're getting fired is because uh, we saw you on the television or, or telly. <laughs> I know. I know, man. Right? Woo. Yeah. I, yeah, I love Neil Peart, too. But uh, <clears throat> that's not the discussion we're having, Mike. Please. Please focus. Please. Come on. Come on. No, I don't want to hear about your fa- your top five albums. Please. Later. Later, dude. We'll talk about we'll talk about it. If Pantera isn't on there, uh, you're you're fired for that. That's fireable. You're, you're fired for cause there. No, uh, you were observed on television uh, being the first in line to buy pot, which is of course now completely illegal. We're not firing you for that. The the, the concern we have here at uh, at Cramerica is that um, well, you took off a of work to go get high and. Regardless of whether it's a monumental occasion, you were shown on TV, you took off of work, you called in sick to work, and we saw you on TV in a tie-dye t-shirt buying marijuana, and you subsequently tested positive for THC. So, we can say with confidence, Mike, 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 we'll order, Mike, get off your phone. No, I don't want Papa John's. I don't, no, no, I don't want, I... What size are the breadsticks? What size do they come in? Uh huh. Is there any bigger? No. All right. No, I don't want. No, I don't. <sighs> extra garlic sauce. Ex- extra gar. Extra. <clears throat> Hand me the phone. Yeah. Extra garlic sauce. How much is that? Fifty. Fifty cent. Fifty cents for extra garlic sauce? Are you get? get all right. Fine. 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 Don't expect a tip. All right. Here's here's Mike back. Thanks, Mike appreciate it Are you done can we okay is it on the way is it on the way because well okay all right good thank you um you took off work to go get high you took off two days of work to go get high we don't feel that that is the kind of employee that we want around where if the mere proposition of getting high on marijuana were to arise you would immediately call out of work to go get high. We don't think that's that's good. I mean, I I I know no, Mike. You, you don't have to. No, it's not the end of the world, Mike. You're gonna you're gonna find another job. It's just in your next job, maybe, maybe when you're taking off, when you know you're not supposed to have THC in your system, right or wrong, uh, in a contract, maybe you shouldn't take off work to go get high. And even if you do and you think you can hide it, don't appear on the local news as the first guy wearing a bright-ass tie-dye t-shirt who took off work to go get high. That's why you're fired. Because we all like to get a little little messed up. We like to let our hair down around here. You know that. You've been to the Christmas party. I know you've been to the Christmas party, my friend. You remember that? 06? Yeah. Woo! Man, what a floozy. I'm my... Uh, it's still itching. Just a little bit, though. Just a little bit, though. I got it under control. No, we, you know we like to party, but, um, but you can't be taken off work to go get fucking high, Mike. Mike! Mike! That's indicative of a problem. Not just, a, not just a, oh, you like to get high and smoke a little ganj. 
when you are taking off of work to go get high, we think you have a problem or I would think you'd, you would have a problem. And frankly, that's just, that's not just somebody that I want, uh, that I want working for this corporation. Um, so I appreciate it. Uh, you can stick around outside and wait for the Papa John's guy. Uh, give me a little cut of it. You know, I, I'll, I'll throw you a couple bucks if you, uh, if you give me a plate of something, uh, before you go, but yeah, we're going to have to let you go. I am, uh, I'm sorry. Um, so thank you for your time. Mike, no, Mike, 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 no, no, no. I don't want to know about all the bands you knew about before they were cool. That's not the, this is not the forum for this discussion, Mike. Not the forum. Not the forum. I just fired you. Yes, I just fired you just now. Yeah. No, this is real. No, this is re- Yeah. 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 This is, uh, this is real. Okay. Th- thank you, Mike. No, I don't have any water. No, not a drop. Not a drop around here. No, not behind my desk. Mike, please, please don't come. No, no, Mike. No, get, get back. No, no. Hello, where's, where's the, give me the water. I like some water. Mike, what is, what is this voice you're doing now? Oh, it's, it's, it's something I'm trying out. I'm, now that you fired me, I got to do a little bit of comedy. Yeah, I, okay. All right, all right, Mike, just get, please, please, please. Mike, Mike, you're fired. Let's just leave it at that. There's a water cooler. You've worked here for 12 years. There's a water cooler. You can hopefully find it. And then please leave the premises. Okay. Good luck, Mike. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. No. Yeah. I love. Uh, yeah. I love you too. I love you. I love you too. Okay. All right. Bye, dude. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Close the door, please. Close the door. Thank you. And scene. Ha. Woo. This, that's why this guy got fired. Right. He shouldn't have gotten fired for testing positive for THC. When you're when you employ people in a state where pot is legal, you know they're going to smoke a little ganj. But look, if you are taking off of work to go get high, to go buy marijuana, let's say there's a new version of some liquor that's dropping. Jack Daniels is coming out with, I don't know, Gentleman Jack Honey. Okay, there we go. Jack Daniels has a Gentleman Jack uh, line of, of whiskey, which is extra aged and in oak barrels and all that shit. And they've got a that that's their line. Now let's say that they announce and they're going to release Gentleman Jack Honey. They take their honey version of of uh, of Jack Daniel's whiskey and they age it extra age or whatever it is they do in those fired oak barrels. And it's fifty dollars a pop now, but it's supposedly really good. <clears throat> and let's say I had a job, I had a straight job, and if I took off of work to go wait in line to buy Jack Daniels. Wouldn't that look like a problem to my employer? Regardless of, it's a momentous occasion. Oh my God, it's this brand new product. And forget for a moment the fact that it's the first one in the state. Quote, making history. No, 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 no. Because my job or my, my job and my employer have not a care in the world about history being made. Don't give a fuck. Just like if you took off of work to go down to fight the race riots in Birmingham, if you just didn't show up and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You're missing like a week of work. Like I'm fighting for the rights of people. I say, well, that's great. You're fired. I don't care. I don't care about Birmingham. My my job as your boss is to get you to do this work. You are not doing this work. You are fired. Yes, you're making history. Yes, that's great. That doesn't give you a pass to not do your job. And what does it look like if you're taking off of work to go do that? And so to this guy's employer, he took off of work to go get high. What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's going to get fired. But as a result of this... Uh, of this uh, of this story, I'm sure he will be more than happy to find a job, or or he will be he will more than easily find a job somewhere because there's going to be a lot of bullshit outrage about, hey man, how come you're firing this dude, man, for just he just he just wants to get just a little little stone, bro. I mean, it's nothing too big, man. Why you gotta be so heavy about stuff? Do people still say heavy? I do. In other news, uh, Jennifer Lawrence tits. Okay, let's talk about this. Uh, This is from, again, NewYorkDailyNews.com. 
This is perhaps Jennifer Lawrence's most revealing look to date. The Hunger Games star gave everyone an eyeful at the Christian Dior show during Paris Fashion Week, showing off plenty of side cleavage in a two-tone white dress on July 7th, 2014. The Oscar-winning actress completed the daring look with plenty of bronzer and frosted lips. Uh, which lips are we talking about? And there's a, there's definitely a picture of the entire side profile of Jennifer Lawrence's tits on uh, on NewYorkDailyNews.com. I'm not going to link it in the description. You'll have to find that shit yourself. Here's my... And of course, I, I find a way to have a problem with this because there's absolutely no way... <clears throat> there's absolutely no way that this was an accident. Absolutely no way. This is Jennifer Lawrence saying, here are my tits. Here they are. I mean, she knows she's a smart enough woman. Women wearing dresses, and I have it on good authority... From Katie, that um, that women know what they're showing off when they go out, when they put on anything, when they put on anything. I was at Best Buy once, and there was very clearly a girl walking around with her uh, with her underwear showing through her leggings, like it was just like out there, like here is my fucking underwear. And I asked Katie about. It. I said, "How do people like? What are you doing? Like, is that?" Is that an invitation? Is that just uh, confidence? Uh, what is it? Or is it just an accident? Does it just, oh, I didn't know in this life that, that that would look that way. And she told me, she said, no. Women know exactly what they're, <clears throat> what they're showing when they go out. Women know that their underwear is hanging out when they bend over. They know, and they're just okay with it. It's equal parts... Uh, not necessarily an invitation, but just, uh, yeah, yeah, here it fucking is. Yeah. Yeah. And you find it sexy, don't you? Yeah, you do. Okay. I like that. Not that, not that it's like, come and get it. Not that they're asking for it because they're not guys. They're not asking for it. Don't be fucking rapists, but it's a, <clears throat> it's a confidence builder. It's like, if you had, if you were a guy and you had six pack abs, shit, if you're a girl, and you got six pack abs, you're showing that shit off, right? You're like, fuck yeah, look at this shit. Check it out. Too many guys do that with their penis, though. And similarly, if you're a girl or a woman with uh, voluptuous curves or nice breasts or you think you look good in your underwear, you're not afraid. You're just like, yeah, fucking A right. Check that shit out. You know, you got the jiggly bottom or uh, apple bottom, I think they call it, the kids nowadays. You're showing off. So there's no way Jennifer Lawrence did not know that she's essentially showing her titty to the fashion press in France. And not that I have a problem necessarily with seeing Jennifer Lawrence's breast, but my problem is larger that this sort of thing used to be, there was, there was a stigma, not necessarily negative, surrounding this kind of thing. It was 15, 20 years ago. If Jen, if you transplanted this picture of Jennifer Lawrence 20 years ago, that would be considered a snafu. You're like, ooh, ooh, I'm seeing something I'm not supposed to. And there's an element of danger there and a little bit of voyeurism that adds just a little, like a, just like a spice, a little spice to what you're seeing, right? When you, when, when I, when you were a kid or when many people were children before the days of X hamster and Pornhub and and X tube and and U porn and all this shit. When people were children, or when people my age were children, there was early stages of the internet, and it was hard to find porn. Hard ish to find porn, and there was an element of danger because you know a lot of us didn't own our own PCs, we didn't have our own smartphones connected to the internet. You know, we were using, you know, you use the family PC to look at porn, or even if you got you, know, you got a hold of a nudie mag or something, or or a, or an FHM or anything like that, and you were looking at something that you knew you weren't supposed to, but you liked it. You knew you weren't supposed to see this. You weren't supposed to be looking at it, but you did it anyway, and you liked it. And there was a, it added uh, a thrill, a danger. But now showing side boob. Showing vag, showing tits, showing ass is a calculated career move. Miley Cyrus, seeing Miley Cyrus jiggle her ass on that guy's crotch was a career move. It wasn't just a, oh, people caught me being skanky. 
She knew exactly what she was doing. And again, I applaud her for being able to play American pop culture like a fiddle. But I have a problem with like, oh, where's that danger? Where's that thrill anymore? It used to be a sex tape was released by celebrities. Back in my day, it was Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee Jones. Or no, it was Tommy Lee, not Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> that would be a sex tape to see. I always confuse the two. That would be a sex tape to see. Tommy Lee Jones and Pamela Anderson. Not Tommy Lee, Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Just see him. And I want him I want him in as in character as Gerard. I want him in character as Gerard from The Fugitive and US Marshals sticking it to Pamela Anderson. But it used to be that sex tapes were leaked and you know, you saw X Pac in China. You saw One Night in China and you were like, "Oh man, I'm going to get I see I've seen China on WWF Monday Night Raw for years. Oh, I'm going to get to see her naked. I bet she's so hot." And then you're like, "Oh my god." Oh, no. Oh, God. But there was that thrill. You didn't have a sex tape out where you could just go on the internet, look it up, and see like, oh, okay. Kim Kardashian and sex, selling sex and being sexualized is now a career move. Kim Kardashian is only famous because she got it. She was caught on tape, or excuse me, she released the tape of her getting it from behind by some rapper. Now, it doesn't always work out well because R. Kelly tried it. It just so happened that nobody told R. Kelly beforehand, like, no, 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 no. R, R, dude, no. Do you, huh? Did you tell anybody about this? No, no, no. I don't, did you tell anybody? R, tell me. Tell me the truth. Did you tell anybody about this? Does any, where, how many copies are there of this? Of this tape? How many, how many copies? How many fucking copies did you make of this tape? You're going to release it to, to TMZ? No, no, no. Get them all. Get them all. We're fucking burning them. That guy did not exist in R. Kelly's life. And we saw what happened. And he still got off, I think. Because the black community was like, yeah, I really like R. Kelly. So I don't think that girl's 16. Like, <laughs> come on. And again, it's, it's, not a, it's, it's not a women's lib issue because, you know, women being confident in their bodies and their self-images and e- even taking hold, taking the reins of their, of their sexual nature is, I, I, I don't know enough to say that it's objectively good, but I, I know enough to say that I don't think it's objectively bad. I, I don't see a way in which it is, it is objectively bad, but I cannot articulate how good it is, how good it is. I think it's good. I just, I don't know how much, but I just, I, I wish there was still that element, just that little twist to, oh, I'm seeing this and I know I shouldn't. The last one was Britney's beaver shot. Britney's beaver shot was probably the last one. That was the last vestige because Britney Spears was always, she was that teen tart pop thing you saw you wanted you knew you shouldn't for a while and you never really got you never really got the sex tape you never really got the the leak nudes or anything like that it never happened it was just she just went batshit crazy but then there was that one fateful night where she forgot to wear underwear and a photog was positioned in just the right way no just the right way i i guarantee you they fight for that angle They've got the model, they've got the car making models all down. They know exactly where to go to try to get that exact pose. And then all of a sudden, bam, there's Britney's beaver. And again, you go, oh my God, oh no, oh no, oh the humanity. But she was the last one. You, you had that like, oh shit, I get to see this? Oh man. Now with female celebs or male celebrities too. For, for women or, or gay males, I guess, whatever. Or transgender people, of course. Trans, of course, of course. Sorry, delicate little lotus flower. Non-binary assignment recognition gendered person. My apologies. You like whatever it is you like. Now there's no, there's no allure. There's no mystique. It's just, yeah, here's my fucking breastuses. Yeah, <laughs> Bam. Nice, ain't they? And while it's easier for consumption, while you while you say, "Oh, wow, I want to look at this girl's tits," I can just Google. Bah, 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 bah. There's no anticipation. There's no mystique. You don't have that. Ooh, 
I have to go looking. I have to, I, I, only a few people have seen this or blah, 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 blah. Nobody's seen this. But now it's a career move. Now you release a sex tape if you want to get back in the public spotlight. I guarantee you there are many female celebs that people would have paid to see Kim Kardashian get railed. But she released it just as a career move. It was somebody would have said that, that tape would have handed around privately for hundreds of thousands of dollars, but she released it. The teen actresses, the teen mom, all the teen moms that are doing porn now to, to lengthen their careers. Like, oh, my career as a, as a reality TV star is done. Nope, it's not. Now I'm doing a sex tape. Have fun. You do, it's not even a sex tape anymore. It's a porn. A sex tape has a, a certain stigma about it where you say, oh, sex tape. Oh, ooh, this was for their personal pleasure. But now I get to see it. Oh, man, this is amazing. This is amazing. Oh, my God, I can't wait to see it. The teen mom, whatever her face is, didn't make a sex tape with that guy. She did a porn. She was in a porn only because she wanted people to continue to talk about her. And I think it's it's not bad for society. Again, I can't articulate that it's necessarily bad for society, but I wish, I just wish in my heart of hearts that there was still, there was still something to be desired. There was still a little bit left to the imagination, something that would eventually culminate in a leaked sex tape or leaked nudes. But now that people, specifically in this case, women are so in control of all that. And again, I can't, deride them for that i just think oh man i really wish it was more of like a hmm like a uh a, a chase let's say or uh <clears throat> or something that that i i shouldn't see or uh or even uh just something i've been waiting to see and something i've waited a long time there's no anticipation anymore it's just at the behest of or at the will of the owners of the breastuses or the vagina, it's just like, yep, yeah, here it is. Here's my beaver. It's like, oh, man, like, that's nice, but I wish I would have waited or I could have waited just uh, just a little bit longer. And uh, as we wrap up the show with our last piece of news, U.S. police officer Joshua Bourne had raped wife, his wife several times before murdering her and children and shooting Rampage. A U.S. police officer murdered his British wife, their two children, and his mother-in-law before killing himself after his wife found out that she had been repeatedly drugged and raped by him, a police report has found. The Spanish Fort Police Department in Utah have only just finished their investigation into Joshua Boren's shootings in January. He went on the rampage in the family home using his police gun to shoot dead his seven-year-old son, Joshua, and five-year-old daughter, Haley. Officers found that 32-year-old Kelly Boren, who was originally from Northampton, had been drugged and raped by her husband several times over a period of time. Boren's therapist told authorities the police officer filmed the assault and his wife only found out what had happened when she discovered the tapes in 2013. She told a few friends but did not report it to police because she did not want to ruin her husband's career, the report said. The couple had reportedly been separated for some time when Mrs. Boren confronted her husband about the rapes by text the night before she was killed. A Spanish Fork Police report shows Boren, 34, and his wife exchanged heated texts the night and morning before the January killings. The Desert News reported that she texted her husband saying their marriage was over. She texted the word rape to him four times, the document show. I hate my life because of you, she texted. You killed a part of me. She wrote in another text, I don't want to live in fear and hate and anger. The next morning, Mrs. Boren told her husband she would take the children. He replied, don't involve the kids. They are innocent. According to the police report, Boren was sexually abused as a child, struggled with drug addiction as a young man, and pornography addiction throughout his life, and had a deep-rooted hatred for his mother. After his father committed suicide when he was five, she began using drugs and seeing several men, one of whom allegedly abused Boren. His sister told police he blamed his mother for not protecting him, and his therapist described him as a three-year-old boy stuck in a big man's body. Josh was a very troubled individual that felt like he was about to lose his wife and children, police wrote in the report. He had worked for the Linden Police Department for only three months before the murder-suicide. Before that, he was a Utah County Sheriff's deputy for seven years, said Matt Johnson from Spanish Fork Police. He used the police handgun he was given for his duties to murder his, fam to murder his family and mother-in-law, Mary King. Toxicology reports from the autopsy showed he had no drugs or alcohol in his system when he carried out the shooting. It shocked the city of Spanish Fork in January, as well as friends and family. The, and investigators said they did not find anyone who believed Bourne was capable of the murder. 
So <clears throat> as long as we are using uh, crazy, the acts of crazy people to uh, to talk about gun control, let's talk about police control then, huh? If we're gonna if we're going to set that precedent in society, and I'll fight against it, but as long as people continue to do it, I say okay. You want to talk about what uh, what Elliot Roger did and and how that impacts gun control or how it input how it should impact gun control. I want to talk about what this asshole cocksucker did, murdering his two children, his wife, and her mother in law, and then himself. Thankfully, thankfully he blew his brains out. I want to talk about what that motherfucker did. Why do police need handguns now? Do police really need handguns? Oh, 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 ah, 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 ah. Oh, yes. Oh, they do. Oh, they do, huh? Huh, okay. And I also want to know why the fuck, if this guy had such problems, if his therapist honestly said he's a three-year-old trapped in a big guy's body, why the fuck was this guy having a badge and a gun? A badge and a gun out on patrol. Why? Why? Why is that allowed? Why is there... A, again, I talked about it. <clears throat> there need We need to have a tremendous amount of oversight on police. A tremendous amount of civilian oversight on police. That's the only way this whole thing works. That's the only way we get this thing back to normal is civilian oversight of police. Civilian oversight. Yes, and that means that we can levy charges against, or we can order other police to charge police officers with crimes. The, the, the only way, only, only way that we get this pendulum back to at least the center line. Because this guy was probably protected by his fellow officers. If he was in a part of a union, definitely protected by the union. Because I guarantee you any decent civil or civilian oversight committee would say, hold on a second. This guy's seeing a therapist. We want to know what the fuck that therapist says. We want to know because he's carrying a motherfucking badge and a motherfucking gun and has arrest power. We want to know if there, if this is a ticking time bomb. And guess what? It was. So if we're going if we're going to live in a world where your therapists, okay, this is part of this is a <clears throat> this is part of federal law now. Your therapist, your therapist, if you go see a therapist and your therapist believes that you might be a danger if you have a gun to people or yourself, they are required to report you to a federal database. Okay? They are required. Never mind HIPAA. You think you have all kinds of HIPAA protections and you should because what you talk about with your motherfucking doctor is privileged, right? Well, not if guns are involved. And that's how it applies to civilians. But I guarantee fucking to you, it does not apply to police officers. And this kind of shit happens. Because you get police officers who have severe mental disorders, whether they be because of child abuse or post-traumatic stress disorder from being in Iraq or Afghanistan, regardless of what the cause is, you have all these people who may be ticking time bombs. And in fact, some of them are. We've seen story after story of police officer just going nuts. And he's got a gun and a badge and he just starts killing people. Killing people around him, killing civilians, whatever. They don't have HIPAA protection. If you don't have HIPAA protection when a simple gun is involved with your fucking therapist and you're a civilian, you don't know, you have no arrest power, you have no authority, you're just Joe Blow human, right? And you own a handgun and you also have some deep-seated mental problems. If your therapists even think that you could be a danger, they have to report you. They are obligated to violate your rights of your HIPAA rights to report you to some federal database, to make you a part of some federal database. That's you as a civilian. What should we do with police officers who have guns, handguns, a shotgun strapped to the dash, an M4 in the fucking trunk, or an AR-15, excuse me? They have no HIPAA rights. None. I want to know if your pee is a funny color. I want to know because... You are a fucking police officer. You signed up for this shit. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, his therapist wasn't telling the his, his therapist wasn't telling the police force what was going on. 
And if he was part of a union or at least just kind of an informal brotherhood of police officers in that area, nobody was asking the questions and nobody wanted to know. And people would have fought for his right, his supposed right, to not have that information talked about publicly outside of a privileged situation between him and his therapist. I guarantee you that happened. And now what? Now look what we got. Police don't have HIPAA rights anymore. You can't. can't. We need civilian oversight, and that civilian part of that civilian oversight is you no longer have HIPAA rights. I don't care if you're getting treatment for the clap. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. If you have the badge and you the gun and the pension and the union, we fucking own you. We own you, and we get to be a part of every single part of your life. Because if you're going to be part of the SWAT team, if you're going to get to serve no-knock warrants, if you're going to get to carry a loaded handgun, even off-duty, if you're going to get that AR-15 in your trunk and take it home with your cruiser, we fucking own you. Because the, uh, the, other, the other alternative is to, let cra- is to give people guns, give potential crazy people guns, not allow them to buy guns, give potential crazy people guns and arrest power and authority, and then just boop, let them go. And that's what we have now. And I think, I think, not a genius. Nothing if not not a genius. But I think that, I think that needs to change. I don't think that's a very good idea. All right, let's, uh, let's bring it home. Woo, another great episode of The Lefty Show. I thank you all for joining me. I had a great time putting on the show. I have hope you had a great time listening. Thank you to everybody for watching, liking, favoriting, and subscribing on YouTube. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX is where you can go to find the show in its YouTube formation. You can also find gaming and vlog content there. YouTube.com slash LeftyOX. Be sure to subscribe there. Thank you to everybody that's been sharing the show with your friends, family, and coworkers. Help us climb the comedy ranks in iTunes. Go to the iTunes store, search The Lefty Show. Be sure to subscribe to the feed leave a rating or a comment if you please and uh, if you're on Android go to your favorite podcasting Android app of choice and search the Lefty Show you'll find us there or just go to leftyshow.podbean.com that's leftyshow.podbean.com you want to follow me on Twitter go to at lefty643 that's twitter.com slash lefty643 to follow me on Twitter Uh, if you want to donate go to imraising.com forward slash 643 productions that's imraising.com forward slash 643 productions to donate thank you guys for joining I hope you enjoyed I'll catch you next time I'm out bye King of the world, baby, king of the world.